action. Welcome, 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 dears and darlings, to the JHS show. Today we're doing classy Q&A, something the JHS show is sorely lacking is class. Mm. Refinement. So today we are going to partake yes. of the finer things, yes. such as charcuterie. Easy. And we're going to be painting. And we're also just going to be answering your classiest questions. Mm -hmm. um, with me here today is, uh, we've got Joshua moderating, of course. Good morning. And we've got Belle, of course. Bonjour. Excellent. No. French is very classy. Very classy. And um, we have me, uh, darlings, Nick. Oh, didn't we agree? Nicholas. Nicholas. Yes. We'll be going by our full names because full names are much classier, much than, classier. than our <clears throat> smaller names. Because when you're classy, you aren't in a hurry. And I feel like in today's modern society, we're all in a hurry. Yeah. We shorten our names. We shorten our content. Yes. yes we yes, rush. Yes. This is going to be like two hours, probably. Yeah. Hopefully. At least. At least two hours. So anyway, without further ado... Let's answer some questions, but first, as you can see, we, we are going to be painting. Mm -hmm. And we've decided that we will all be painting each other. And by the end of this live stream, we will pick three blessed winners to take these portraits of us home. Mm -hmm. um, but, but first, uh, could we get some uh, Topo Chico, please? From our dear butler, <laughs> From our, Zachary. our dear butler, Zachary. Thank you, Zachary. Zachary, gentle, please. He did say please. He did say please. All right. Well, uh, our, well, darling Zachary is doing that. Uh, should we start answering some questions? Um. Yes, we should. Let's get our paintings started. Get it started. I think that's okay. important. Should okay. we talk about who we're painting in our approach? Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. As I'm, we get started, we can answer some questions. I'm going to be painting uh, Joshua and Belle. It's going to be painting Nicholas, me. and I am going to be painting Isabel. Brilliant! I'm taking Brilliant. an interpretive approach. Interpretive I will approach. have a little bit of your likeness in the painting, Isabel, but mm. I want to capture a little bit more of my experience of you and okay. mm. how you have impacted my life emotionally. Oh. Um, and uh, and how you've impacted this show. Mm. Okay. Wonderful. My approach is a little bit different. I'm going to focus on Nick's likeness and his defining features. And I'm going to <laughs> enhance just the beautiful architecture of did you, his sorry, complexion. Did you say architecture? Yes, the like, architect texture of your complexion. Okay. Um, the colors. Cool. The dynamic yeah, range nice. of your features. Wonderful. That's going to be my approach cool. uh, today. And I haven't decided my approach because sometimes spontaneousness is the classy. Thing Thank, you, Thank you, Zachary. Thank you, Zachary. Uh, cheer Let's all cheers uh, to the future of the JHS show just being way more classy. To the future. To the future. Infinity and beyond. To infinity and to be classy. I do want to take a moment, mm. a todos vigente, to wish all of the Hispanics, Latinos, Latinas, Latinas, a happy Hispanic, Latino, Latina, Latine Heritage Month. Excellent. From me to you. Beautiful, beautiful, beautifully said, Joshua. Um, shall we commence? Shall we commence um, painting? Let us commence. <laughs> wonderful. I've already begun. You okay. have. Okay. Wonderful. Um, so I'm gonna. We're gonna get started. Can we like throw a question out so that we can like toss it around as oh, yeah. we are painting? Yeah. Um, let me find a good one here. Is there a point at which holding your pinky? Uh, excuse me. Let me start over. Yeah. Is there a point at which you're holding your pinky too high or? Does it just get classier the higher you hold it? 
I kind of feel like there is a range of classiness and there is definitely too high. When your pinky is too high, you are clearly communicating that you don't feel confident in you or yourself mm. or your work. And so yes. you need to gain a level of comfort and confidence when you're in the presence of others. So mm. don't put your pinky too high. Nothing yeah. is so unclassy. What's the opposite of classy? What's the word? Tra well, nothing trashy. is more trashy <laughs> than trying too hard. Yes. I, I think we can all agree on that. Indubitably. Um, so I have begun, I don't, it's kind of hard to see, I have begun doing a line sketch of Dear Joshua's face. Here. I forgot, I thought you were painting me for a second, I forgot, and I was like, questioning your approach. But... That's okay, darling. Um, any more questions? Oh, yes. Uh, anything... What's your favorite brand of breakfast tea? Breakfast tea. Mm. Let's go brand or style. English breakfast, Irish breakfast. Um... Is Earl Grey a breakfast tea? Because that's that's what Not I'd be breakfasting traditionally, with. but you know, you you can you can have it for breakfast. You know, there's Who's nothing more you? classy than breaking down barriers and changing, you know, society's expectation of what classy is. You know, exactly, exactly. Oh, where'd you go, Joshua? You disappeared? Oh, disappeared. I'm right here. I just. I have a little too much yellow in this. And oh, okay. You yes, I too one. am working on perfecting Nick's skin tone. Yes, I <laughs> am doing that, but for Joshua. Are we all using our Blackwing pencils to sketch yes, today? Yes, we are. Because Blackwing is the most... Would you, Joshua, would you say that the Blackwing is the most classy pencil? The Blackwing carries a prestige... And anybody who's using a black wing is obviously trying to send a message. That doesn't mean that it's wrong. If you are aware of the different styles and um, thickness and hardness of graphite, then then please, by all means, use, use a black wing. I, today, uh, because I'm trying to reconnect with my humble origins, I'm using a Nick Pro 2.0. It's a two millimeter lead. Uh, mechanical pencil that specifically it was designed a, what? a Nick Pro. I knew that I knew you were going to do this, Nicholas. Nick doesn't need to use a Nick Pro. Sorry, what was my name he... again, Bo? What did you Nicholas. say? Nicholas. Yes, Nicholas there. doesn't need to use a Nick Pro because he isn't a Nick Pro. Oh, thank you. Sorry, Joshua. Continue. No, no, it's fine. So all that to say, is Blackwing classy? Yes, but again, just like the lifting of the pinky finger, don't do too much. Be reserved, be humble, be knowledgeable. Mm, I love that. I love that. That's a, that's a lovely sentiment. I wonder how people in the chat are doing, because honestly, I'm getting lost. I'm how getting exactly lost. does one stay classy in this crazy time? Uh, in this economy, it is it is honestly the greatest challenge that we have. I feel like, as I said before... The greatest sign of someone who's classy is someone who really pushes pushes the boundaries, you know, in a way mm. that doesn't break them. Oh, interesting. I don't know. Oh, Emily. Yes, please come share all of those with us. Anytime oh, yeah. you're welcome. We uh, have snacks. We should obviously, I mean, Russ, Russ is nerves. welcome, but I, I, I don't think he has quite the refined palate for Joshua. Olives. Shall we sample the jalapeno olives? Oh, yes, please. Let us do this. Hmm. It's very robust. Robust? Yep. Classy. Joshua? I feel like this olive has transported me to the Greek hillsides. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's wonderful, darling. You can really taste the rust of the earth. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hold on. I want to try one now. I'm going to eat one with a cracker. <laughs> what is this music? It's classy, I can tell you that much. I believe the intention of this music is to take us back to former times, to reunite us with the feelings of our ancestors, which is 
which is sorely lacking in today's society. You know what I mean? Somebody's <laughs> someone oh, change this change this drivel, please. What's our next question, Joshua? <clears throat> oh, sorry, I, I've become lost in my painting. It's very hard not to become um, lost in my who, painting. <laughs> who is the classiest person at JHS? Are you ready for this? And who is the trashiest? <gasps> oh my! What scandal? What scandal indeed? Mercy my good me! Man. I would say, Belle, you go first. Okay. Um, if I so, how are we defining classy? We need to discuss. I think classy is a state of mind as much as it is a way of living. Um, so I mean. I can say for sure, I know I'm not the classiest. I will say that. I'm humble enough to admit. I'm humble enough to admit that as well. I would say when it comes to taste for the finer things, I would say Joshua has a leg up oh. in that department. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. You're welcome. And I say that because I say that in all in all truth. Joshua's classiness is rather well rounded. I think yes. that some is, people Is that a fat joke, Isabel? Uh, no. <laughs> in your interests, you have a classy taste in food, in in drink, this is true. in art, this is true. in music. There's not many others at JHS who have such a well-rounded or robust. It's, it's, it's interesting that you keep bringing up this word, but we'll 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 let it slide. Oh mercy. Um. I I must agree though. I am the classiest person at JHS. It is true, Josh. We do our general manager Stephen um has a good taste of food, but his taste in music is lacking. Not to, classy. Not classy. To put it lightly. You... To put it lightly. Yeah. <clears throat> But that doesn't mean we don't love dear, dear Stephen. We yes. cherish yes. him. We cherish, we cherish him deep in our hearts. We do. He's might, the reason we're here today. I was going to say, one might argue that Stephen is the one that allows us to do things like this. Am I right? Yes, you are right, my good sir. Although I will say that Stephen is not here today. And yes. we'll see how he feels about he what we've decided to do. probably not like this live stream. Uh, here's a good question. What exactly does one do to stay classy in these crazy times we already did that we did one. that one did i yep yes are you sure yeah. yep oh i've gotten so lost in rhapsody uh what's the classiest cereal classiest cereal yeah oh mm. cheerios mm. oh that's great because of saying cheerio because cheerio because of saying cheerio yeah what about you joshua um I think I'm going to have to say a small bowl of granola. Oh. I mean, technically, oh, it's our cereal. Yes. Yes, that is true, my good man. Uh, if Topo Chico disappeared, what would the classiest sparkling water be? Oh. Um, La Croix. Oh. How could we forget? Uh -huh. <laughs> How could we forget? Nicholas, this next question you know, is for you. Oh, for please. Me, please forgive me. Continue. Look, the reason I think I will say that La Croix is the fanciest, or the classiest, I'm sorry, um, is not because it um, is necessarily completely unique, but it was, I, I might say the first, maybe not the first spark canned sparkling water, but it was a trailblazer for yes. all oh, of the certainly. brands that we see certainly. today. Certainly. Yes, absolutely. La Croix ran so that the rest could walk. That's true. Yes, yes absolutely. Agreed. My good man. Um, did we actually ever... Nicholas, what did you say your favorite breakfast tea was? My breakfast tea? Yeah. Breakfast tea. I didn't say what my favorite breakfast tea oh, was. Oh, please. Please tell us. Um... A good mint. Mm, refreshing. A good refreshing mint. I actually prefer. Uh, there's this. I purchased the tea 
um, not long ago, and it was called a champagne tea. It was a, a delightful oolong from northern Taiwan. Oh, I wish I wish I could live that experience again for the first time. Mm. Zachary, I can't seem to place my napkin. Can would you mind? Oh yes, please. Thank you. Oh, it's right in front of me. Again, I'm so lost in the art. Um, if JHS was a flavor, what flavor would JHS be? Ooh. Hmm. Now, we have to... This is going to bring up one subject that I think may be a little bit troubling. Which reminds me, we have not completed our classy, trashy... Go. I was the only one that said who was classy. Oh, yeah, we did discuss classy. True. I think we need to discuss the classiness level of JHS as a whole because if we're going to be honest because honesty is classy the only reason that we have the freedom to be classy today is because a certain very tall man is not here who I will say may be in the running for the trashiest I, at JHS I didn't want to say it but I I you know sometimes you just you have to spill the tea <laughs> You have to <laughs> spill the oolong. <laughs> Funny, Listen. darling. Um, yeah, I, I would, I would say, I think Josh would be high in the running, wouldn't you say? Josh, uh, darling, would be. Yes, agreed. Oh, this is that oh, audacious God, song again. Coming back up. I mean, let's think about it. He eats from Subway. He, he eats wears the way Crocs. of the sub. He eats the way of the sub. He wears Crocs. He wears the forbidden whole shoes. Ugh. He wears the same outfit nearly every day. Yes. He's So he's not very fashionable. No. He doesn't have a great classy taste in food or drink. His taste in food is dreadful. <laughs> Ugh. What is the most dreadful thing we've seen Joshua eat? Uh, Joshua Heath uh, Scott, I mean, that is. Lest we forget... <laughs> the episode that we did about the Kemper where we were locked in this room and Josh ate spam <gasps> spam and beanie weenies <laughs> I... there's nothing more trashy than a beanie weenie indubitably I can't say that I, I've seen Heath eat this uh, but I've heard him tell a story of Pouring corn nuts, I believe, into a can of RC Cola <gasps> and enjoying oh. it. Combining one of the greatest, trashiest beverages with one of the greatest, trashiest snacks. <sighs> the peanut? Come on. Why not try a pistachio? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, I'm lost. I'm lost in this, in this moment right now. And it's Same. just bringing me such joy. Um, so if JHS was a flavor. Yes. Yeah, so the reason that I did sidetrack is I felt like we needed to define what, you know, what JHS is. Because we are aware that here we are today being very classy, but we are just three. We are just one portion of the JHS show, of JHS. We do not complete JHS. So we have yes. to be honest here. Because I would like to say... You know, a classy flavor, like, you know, olive, pistachio. <laughs> yeah. Something robust. But yes. that's not, when, when we are all present here, that is not who JHS is altogether. So we may need to sort of identify the class level overall of JHS. Yes. Um, I think if JHS were a flavor, it would be probably a... I don't know, sort of a bright, uh, maybe tropical flavor. Something that, um, a playful flavor. Like orange. Orange? Yeah. I can see that. Because there can be class in orange, but yes. there can be trash, okay? Right. I'd, like, I'd be curious what the what the chat thinks about chat please chime in if jhs was a flavor what flavor would jhs be 
barbecue. Is there anyone here that, at JHS? Actually, that, <laughs> that tracks. You know what? I'm ashamed to admit it. And maybe one day we're able to affect change here. But barbecue might be, might be correct. You know, it depends on what style of barbecue you're doing. Because we associate barbecue with, with low class. But if you go to any Brazilian barbecue in Kansas City. Am I right, Zachary? You're right. Any Brazilian barbecue in Kansas City, it would be quite expensive. Also, somebody said broccoli rabe. I don't think I'm familiar with this. Uh, vanilla, dark star, please. <laughs> oh, we are nothing of the like. Well, let's not say we aren't vanilla, Isabel. Well, we know someone here who is. Which, you know, I am curious. Do you think there's anyone at JHS who competes with Josh and his classiness level at all? Yes. <laughs> you? I don't. I don't think I'm the next on the list. Some might differ, but... You know what? Nicholas? You can drop that attitude. What? Please, please. <laughs> please what? Just fill in, fill in. Isabel's being Isabel. I will say, um, as far as in this room, if I were to rate the three of our classiness, I would say Joshua, just between the three of us, or are we include, including no, everyone Zach at the as com- well? at the company. The company. The oh, company. And everyone at the whole company? I would say we know Joshua is at the top, and then there's a tie at the bottom between Maya and 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 Dear Heath. Oh, yes. I forgot about Maya. Maya, <laughs> Maya is Josh's assistant, and she is the only one that competes for his spot on the trashy throne or the the trashy stool. <laughs> 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 Oh, yes. The other day, I saw her eat Doritos for breakfast. Oh. I saw her eat a corn dog with no stick. She broke the stick off. A corn dog. I'm confused. I don't know. (sighs) Maya bought a corn dog. She said she couldn't fit it in her air fryer, so she broke the stick off. Interesting decision. Beginning with the corn dog, but you know, and ending with the air fryer. At least she used an air fryer and didn't dip it again in a vat of oils. Yes, exactly. Could what's I, your no? Please, no, please, I interrupt. Oh, good sir, it's totally. I mean, absolutely fine. Uh, I would like to. Could we get any kind of progress on each oh. of our paintings and where we? currently are at um isabel i would love to see uh uh your beautiful rend- uh, rendering of of my likeness are you sure yes i am the sound is so ominous <laughs> come come now i need to collect myself okay. hold on joshua let's see oh yes i'm ready remember this isn't meant to be a pure likeness but rather a representation Beautiful. Oh my. Beautiful Joshua Darling. I can see I can see myself. Um and yeah, this isn't meant to be a pure likeness, but rather a representation. That's not what you said at the beginning of, of this episode. Of but... Nick's most defined features. This is <laughs> <laughs> Oh, forgive me, darling. Snorting is not classy. This is where I'm at right now. Right right now I wanted to but, make sure I mean, but look. Hold I think on. I've quick, captured. Let's do a quick one for one. <laughs> Pretty close. Pretty close. The the one thing that I wanted to make sure I got right was the skull circumference in comparison to the cheekbones, and I think that I'm. I think that is happening. Yes. And um, maybe I'll give him some eyes. Maybe I won't. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. He doesn't always use his eyes when he asks me where things are. Ha 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 ha. I have been roasted. Oh, we just also we're not using stingers today because stingers are not, are classy. not classy. Um, speaking of, 
Shall we do an Ernie Ball trivia time? Oh, yes. Yes. Um, On three. One, one two, two, three. three. Ernie, Ernie Ball, Ball trivia, trivia time. time. Good oh. morning, my dear children. Uh, on today's episode, we, as always, are bringing you an Ernie Ball trivia time. This is the part of the episode where we ask you a piece of trivia from Ernie Ball itself, sent to us by Ernie Ball. And the first person to get the question correct in our servers will win an entire box of Ernie Ball strings. So your question for today is, how many years was the Axis Sport in production? Again, how many years was the Axis Sport in production please answer in the chat um while we're waiting uh thank you zachary while we are waiting for an answer um i i liked this question this one's a little bit more i don't know how, how shall we say this on the serious side yes please um what is your favorite piece of art art exhibit mu museum exhibit anything along those lines mm. Hmm, that's a good question. Belle? Isabel, excuse me. Thank you, Joshua. Oh, thank you, Zachary. He's refreshing our Topo Chico. Well, since you're taking so long to answer, okay. um, there was an exhibit at the Kemper Museum of Contemporary Art here in Kansas City, just down the street from the Nelson Atkins Museum. Um, it had an exhibit called The Regional, which featured artists from all over the Midwest, which is where... JHS and Kansas City is located in the Midwest of the United States. The regional featured many, many artists from around the region, as I said. Uh, but my favorite, let me let me find his name quickly. Um, oh, I've lost it. Anyway, it was a, a Panamanian artist, a Panamanian American artist who created um, slightly less than life-size 3D renditions of indigenous peoples from Panama in contemporary situations. And I thought it was striking and stunning. The The entire exhibit was stunning and I was moved deeply. I actually invited you, Nicholas, and you, you decided to, I don't know. I believe I care was of your children or taking something. the children to the seaside that day. Um, let me think. Art ex uh, what was the can you reframe the question dear Josh what's your favorite museum or exhibit let me see if I put this on, in a way you can understand oh um oh mercy. I have been I have been radical sick, burn sick sickeningly sickeningly burned um let's see um I can't remember the last time I've been to museum. Um, so I don't, I don't know. My, I, I must say my favorite, um, art exhibit is the exhibit of life and love and art and music, mm. which we see every day here on the JHS show when Josh isn't here. I will say, um, because I cannot answer this question. Probably I will. I, I was at the theater, and I saw the great Robert Plant and Allison Krauss perform, and it was moving. It moved me to tears. Do you have a favorite wine? There is a brand. It is called Josh, and it is not bad. <clears throat> what about you, Joshua? I don't have a favorite brand. Um, I've been, I have been purchasing, I've purchased several bottles by now of a beautiful Pinot Grigio from Trader Joseph's. <laughs> the imports it's that, the tra that he brings in on his yachts. Are just impeccable. And and I must give it to Trader Joseph. He is wildly underrated for his wine selection. Uh, indubitably. <laughs> Isabel, do you have a favorite wine? 
I don't know if you want to know the answer to that question. Oh, you probably drink Moscato. <laughs> Actually, there is a there is one at um that I frequently buy at uh, Target. It is called Apo- Apothecary Dark. Isabel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, real talk. That one's terrible. Oh, no, um, it's not. Anyway. anyway. <clears throat> no, sir, it's fine. If an empire fell in the woods and there was no one there to hear it, would it make a sound? Mm, wait, is that the question? Yes. <laughs> if an empire fell in the woods? Would it make a sound? Mm. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. I'm just going to say no. Here's what, what I'm going to say. <laughs> The great empires of the Inca, the Mayans, and the Mexica all fell within a forest. And we have been feeling the reverberations of that pain and anguish ever since. Hmm. Uh, Does it make a sound? Gentlemen, I I must ask, do you think about the Roman Empire? Did you hear the empires I just named? Do you think I think about the Roman Empire? That's why I'm asking. No. Also, I wasn't listening. I was focused on Nick's rosier cheeks. Um, Would you like to see them? Sure, go ahead. (laughs) Beautiful. I think I've kept... I think I've really captured his... His... There is a deep sadness. Sadness? Which... Maybe maybe today is not the day for us to talk about. I guess that's up to Nick. There is a deep sadness in the artist. In the mind of an artist. Any great artist, writer, creator, videographer, musician, which Nick is all of these things, contains a deep sadness, which I felt it was only morally correct to capture that today. And I'm about to drop this accent. because It's I'm... beautiful. Joshua, can we see progress on your painting? Yes. Yes, you can. Thank you, good sir. (laughs) Beautiful. Beautiful, my good man. It's like looking into a mirror of of my soul. Of your soul. Wonderful, wonderful. What are your favorite music-related movies or series? Non-fiction, fiction. fiction. Music-related movies or series? I will have to say the classic School Academy of Rock um, with um, good Sir Jack Black was profoundly Mm. inspirational to my Mm. upbringing. I also think that the movie... Uh, what's it called? It's the one about the Beach Boys. It's called Mercy something. Mercy Street? No. Maybe that's what it's called. Also, great movie. Somebody you know, in the comments correct me on what that movie's called. In in um, Sir Jack Black's uh, most prized film, School Sorry, of Rock. Sorry, thank you, Zachary. The Academy of Rock. There's one great lesson that I've learned from that movie when he says... He writes the song, You're Not Hardcore, Unless You Live Hardcore. Mm, yes. oh, it's, it's touching. It is touching. That is one of the greatest pieces of philosophy of our time. Yes, yes, it is true. It is true. It is very true. Would you like to know the winner of Ernie Ball Trivia Time? I would yes, love... Yes, Joshua announced the winner of Ernie Ball Trivia Time. Zachary, could you fetch me some white paint? I don't want to make Nicholas's teeth look stained. Uh, Once again, your question for today was, how many years was the Axis for in production? And the answer was five years. And the winner is Ja Tin. Ja Tin, congratulations on winning today's Ernie Ball Trivia Time. Please send me an email with your shipping information and what kind of Ernie Ball strings you would like to the JHS show at jhspedals.com. And if you're not Jotin, please do not email me. I will find you. Nick. Mm. Yes? If you could change anything at JHS, like you owned the company, what would it be? 
I'd make it classy, darling. <clears throat> How would you do that? I would have salad bars. Ooh, classy. I would have... I would start making petals that just didn't have anything on them at all. Just blank. Oh, because the petal is the canvas. Yes, And yes, you yes. are the artist. Yes. I think I would also... Um, I would probably create some kind of uniform where we all kind of... Like a dress code. You know what I mean? Oh, we need a dress code here. Some of the outfits that I see people saunter through these halls in are just robustly devastating. I don't understand why you keep using this word. It's, it's powerful. Classy. It's robust. <laughs> Belle, what's your best JHS moment? Honestly, this painting might be one of my greatest mm. JHS moments, which I can't pick up right now <laughs> because it would cause some problems. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> oh my. I didn't answer the movie question. I don't really have a favorite music <laughs> movie and or show, um, but in a similar vein, I really, really love the movies Stand and Deliver with Edward James Olmos. And the Freedom Riders, who and the act, who's actress, main actress, I can't remember the name of at the moment, but uh, both of those movies are about teachers. So mm -hmm. obviously, you you know <clears throat> you know my interests. Um, Zachary, this was a question for Digger. I'm not sure who Digger is, but if you could join any band in the history of music, who would you want to play with? Me? Yes, you, Zachary. You get to be I a part. Yes. Any band. Please, please, step into the camera. Any band in the world, if you could be part of that band, any at any point in time in, or history. Yeah. That's tough because you don't want to join a band and ruin what it was. Mm, very classy. Very classy, Zach. Zachary, I'm sorry. Okay. If I were to ruin a band and join it, either Green Day or Blink-182. Mmm. Very interesting, Zachary. We listen to Blink-182. I would like to take a moment of appreciation for our dear Zachary. I must say, since him coming on board here at JHS, he has brought a certain level of class and may I say... Um, manners. Manners. Yes. Um, before he came in, we did not say good morning. <laughs> just gonna pretend that didn't happen. What's the best non-meat cheese item to accompany a charcuterie spread? Olives, which I must say, I've had like five of these olives and they're delicious. I like peaches. <laughs> peaches? Like as a fruit? Wait, did I miss a question? Maybe. What is the best non-meat? Oh my goodness, we didn't get the cheese out. Please take the what? camera off of me while I eat. There was cheese. Oh, dear Belle, that was in classy, not classy, fail. I was trying to think of sick burn, but what the classy version of that is. Mm. <clears throat> Who would play each JHS show cast member? I want to, so, okay, let me just ask a question. Who would play each J J at Wow. Yes, it's you okay. Can do it. Words are difficult. <laughs> Vocabulary is troublesome. <laughs> Who would play each J H S show cast member in an over the top Hollywood biopic? Hmm. Um. I, let's see. I would say Pedro <clears throat> Pascal for my friend Joshua. I think, I think he would do a good job. I'm going to throw out something that is very avant-garde. Is it related to this question? Yes. Okay. Which I do think I would say that being on avant-garde is quite classy. Can we not agree? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. with that, I would like you to consider my next submission for my the 
actor I would like to play me. Oh, of course you. With so, an open con- mind. No. Continue, continue. I would like the great Sir Danny DeVito to portray me. Hmm. I feel that Interesting maybe choice. we capture uh, a similar energy um, that I, I, I can only imagine him portraying properly. Nicholas? Um, I would say, for me, I would pick... So hard to cast yourself. Michael Sarah. <laughs> really? Fine. <laughs> it's classy to... Uh, doth whine and complain therein. So I won't. I'll accept your fate that you have thrown upon me. Um, there's an actress coming to mind. <clears throat> she plays the ancient one. Tilda Swinton? Yeah, Tilda Swinton. I believe Tilda Swinton would make a wonderful Nicholas Lowe. <laughs> Honestly, I'll take it. We love, we, we lo- love we Tilda Swinton love in this Tilda room. Swinton. Shoot. I sort of look like Tilda Swinton when I'm not wearing any makeup. Please, Isabel. I just have to say, well, we are siblings, so... I can see how Tilda Swinton would portray an excellent Nicholas. Who would play Josh? Um, Will Ferrell. Ugh, I can't stand him. <laughs> Will. Will Ferrell. I'm talking about Will okay. Ferrell. <laughs> um, oh, Lucille Ball. Let, <laughs> that That is a great compliment from the comments. I wish that was an option for me. Let's turn this question around. If you were to play... Somebody in an over-the-top Hollywood biopic. Who would you be, be cast as? Oh, Lucille Ball, <laughs> Danny DeVito, Nicholas. Um, I would pick. Hmm. <gasps> Nicholas Cage. That's a little on the nose. Um, and we all know <laughs> noses are not classy. Um. Mm. I don't know. In a bio, on a biopic, yes, I would play. I would play. Let's see. What is happening? <laughs> Sorry. It appears we are being sabotaged from yes, our soundtrack. Yes, it seems as though. <laughs> Do you hear? It's what sounds like it is thunder. thundering it's outside. Very loud uh, thunder. I which would is pick, quite classy. I would want to play. I would want to play a, a young J.R.R. Tolkien. <laughs> Interesting choice. Yes, yes, yes. Because J.R.R. Tolkien is classy. Joshua, what about you? Sorry. I'm thinking. I think that I could probably be I don't know. Come back to me. Come back okay. to me. Okay. Um There's a top chat. Will you read it, Joshua? Oh yes. Todd Baxley, thank you for the five dollars. Charlie Day equals Nick. Kristen Wig is Belle. Lou Diamond Phillips is me. And Dax Shepard is Josh. Who's our lovely? Who's lovely Dax Shepard? He's um that man with the big nose and the blonde hair. What? I don't. I Wait, am I thinking of somebody else? What is happening with this music? We're losing our class yeah, very quickly. Yeah, we really are. What is this? Oh no! Oh no! This is terrible. <laughs> I must. I must. This is not good. Um, no! 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 <laughs> My ears no, are burning. Wait, wait. I believe. Oh, Doctor Jiv- uh, Brandon Head said I could play Doctor Zhivago. <gasps> Incredible. <Who's> that? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you after this. I have a, a record. I'll I'll lend you because it's really wonderful. Okay. Um, I think I could probably play um, Francisco Franco, who was a Spanish dictator. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not saying I like the man, but I I do have. The right disposition. We'll, mm. we'll just say it that way. Um, have you read The Buttress of Windsor? Oh, excuse me? 
Ugh, of course I have. Remind me what that one's about, because I've read so many classy books, I can't remember I just, all of them. Ah, uh, yes, I'm insulted that you would even ask. I, I want to just, I want you to take a minute to think about your answer. Have you read The Buttress of Windsor? No. Isabel? I haven't. Um, I skimmed it a bit. Okay, because The Buttress of Windsor is a fictional book mentioned by Tenacious D in the song Double Team. Woof. Uh -huh. So we know who's a liar and who's not. Um. Well, sometimes a little lie... <laughs> is is a is a big adventure that can take you to great places Let's that you never thought you could possibly ever go. There are okay. a stunning two hundred concurrent viewers. At wow. The wow! It's almost as if this isn't something people actually wanted to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some questions from the chat. Chat, please. If you have questions for us about anything, it can be serious. They can be silly. Um, Just. Hit us with what what you got. What do you want to know? What do you want to know about us? What do you know want to know about me? Uh, what do you want to know about Zach, Ari? That was almost poetry. Oh, oh speaking, speaking of, of oh, I wanted to share with all of you this book I found at Half Price Books. It's called The Astonishment of Origins by Raina Maria Rilke, who is my favorite poet behind. Octavio Paz. Um, I believe I've read Rilke on the show before, but these are his French bones. He is a German poet, and apparently he writes in French, but yeah, this cover is amazing. It's beautiful. Classy. Are you going to read to us? <clears throat> uh, I can. Please. Let's, let's get some questions first. Okay. Um, classiest dog breed. Classiest dog breed? Um... Shih Tzu. Pardon my French. <laughs> wow, okay. Nicholas, take a sip of your Topo Chico. Thank you, Topo Chico. Thank you. Um, a poodle. I don't know if it... Let, let me put my glasses back on. I can't see without them. Um... I don't know if this is the classiest per se. Um, it depends on what part of the world you're in. But I truly do love, well, first of all, I have to say I love my Chihuahua min miniature pincher mix, Nixie. She is a delight. She is also a demon. She um, hates. hates me. She is the worst. <laughs> she hates Nicholas, and Belle's just jealous. She's scary. No, here's the thing. I need to actually talk about Nixie, <laughs> this little demon dog. I'm just going to... She is a demon, but she's my demon. The thing mm. is, yes, she is Josh's demon, and he uses her as an extension of himself <laughs> that he can excuse by going, oh, she's just a little puppy, and he will bring her in and say, hey, pet her, knowing full well that he's gonna that that little excuse me careful delight that little delight is gonna bite at your fingers um she's adorable i there's seriously not a day that goes by where i look at her and don't think you are the cutest thing on this planet wow thanks a lot um my favorite dog breed, though, is the Xoloitz Quitle. It's the Mexican hairless dog called Cholos or Cholos for for, for, fort, for short. Um, when Nixie passes on, I fully intend, despite what Katrina says, to get a Sholo. Um, what's your favorite David Lynch movie? Oh, that's a good question. What's your favorite David Lynch movie? So I know I know this is the right answer, and part of that is because I've honestly not watched that many David Lynch movies, but I love the TV show Twin Peaks. Again, I know, so does everybody, but it's truly, it's really, really wonderful. I love it. I am going to be honest and say that I don't, 
know if I've seen a David Lynch movie at at all, which is, <clears throat> you know, it is what it is. It is what it it's is. It's not a good answer. It's a bad one. I must say I agree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nick and Bell, how is Ross going? Oh. Indubitably, Indubitably, good the, sir the, or madam. Yes, the content we are creating for Ross is rather robust. <laughs> no, it is going good, though. We're having fun with it. Ross is cool. We like it. Nick has set up a little filming table next to his desk yes. where he's mounted like a, a camera. It's very impressive. He mounted like a camera and a light by his desk so he can just swivel around after answering emails and make videos. So he's been He's been jamming out in his little corner making some videos that you're going to be seeing soon on the yeah. Ross Instagram. Follow Ross Electronics on Instagram. You don't. Uh, Shameless Paul, plug. Paul Hope, have any of you ever by accident or on purpose burned off any of your hair? I used to burn the hair on my knuckles yeah, me a too. lot when I was in junior high. Yeah, I, I used to do that. I used to burn my hair while soldering, um, particularly modding petal. Whenever I would mod... Because mods are rather involved. Mm -hmm. They have many steps. It's a long process, much like aging wine or cheese, modding a petal. Yes, yes. It takes time and care. And I would burn my hair, burn my fingers. I would I would accidentally get um, those LED leads underneath my fingernails and stab underneath my nail, which That's is dreadful. the most dreadful feeling on earth. And it makes me want to simply no longer exist um werner smith asks what's a life altering novel um it kind of depends on what you mean by life altering i think one of the most encouraging novels i've ever read is uh ender's game by orson scott card mm. um and i don't know it's very good but one of the books that disturbed me okay there's two horror uh, there's a novel called The Only Good Indians, which is very scary. And then, um, oh, what's it called? It's by Donna Tart. Donna Tart. It's about these kids who are studying Greek. Anyway, um, The Secret History by Donna Tart is disturbing. Was it novel? It's Was a novel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, book. Let's just leave it at book. A What's book. the most life-altering book that you've read? I think Jeff Tweedy's memoir has been, was incredible. That was a really good That was a really good book. Do you remember what it's called? It's, ugh, it's it, called How it's to called Write One How Song. To get, no, that's not his memoir. Ugh, crap. Uh, it's called Let's Get Going So We Can Get Back or something like that. And it's a, basically his whole life story. And it's just really good. If you are a songwriter, you should read that book. I I listened to the book on audiobook, which I highly recommend because he reads it. And there's a few chapters where he talks to his son, his sons and his wife, and they actually read their portion, which is, which is wonderful. Mm. I don't read. <laughs> <laughs> um. Fair enough. What's the most life-altering TV show? Or um, movie? Gilmore Girls. I did read one very life-altering book that my therapist made me read, and I don't want to tell you the title because it feels <laughs> a little too invasive. <laughs> okay, here's... This isn't actually in the chat. This is my question. What What's the most basic thing that you love? The most basic? Yeah, just like the thing yeah, that yeah. everybody loves, and you're a little ashamed that you love it, but you do love it, and you're not going to apologize for it. Taylor mm. Swift, Gilmore Girls. Um, I think. Ah, oh, what's what? Do, I don't. I know that there's something for sure that like I like it, and that's like, oh my gosh, that's so basic. Um. The Beatles. Mm -hmm. That I feel like that's a, that's like a line thing. It depends on like who you are, I guess, because I feel like the I there's like 
I don't think the Beatles are basic, but I think that the way that musicians talk about them make him musicians overrate them, and it makes it hard to like them out loud because people are like, ugh, pick mm-hmm. another band, you know? What yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Either that or just like comic book movies, you know? Mm. Yeah. Well, oh yeah, definitely. Com- I love comic book movies. I think if my answer would though would be pumpkin spice. Yes. Oh, I freaking yeah. love every fall. Ugh. I am excited for pumpkin everything. That's true. I think the fall. Like I think just yes. fall yeah. season in general. It's like, ugh, oh, you like the fall, so doesn't everybody. But it's like Everyone likes it for a reason. Because it's incredible. It really is the best time of year. Yeah. Uh, I do, like, the thing that I always tell people, though, is pumpkin is indigenous to the Americas, where my ancestors are from. So I should like it. Like, you can't shame me for liking pumpkin when when we gave pumpkin to the world. Right. I Gen- think. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, gentlemen, we are we we yes, are nearing was, the end. Yeah, we need to pick winners of these. We um, need to paintings. present our paintings, talk about what they mean, and choose winners. How do we want to pick winners? Um, that's a good question. We could. Why don't we let Zach just pick from the chat? Oh, okay. Zach, if you want you one the... of these paintings, thumbs up emoji. Give a thumbs up emoji, and Zach will just pick three lucky winners. Maybe Zach, you can say... choose who gets who. Too. Okay. Okay. Should we show our paintings while he's picking? Sure, 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 sure. So, Joshua, I have the camera on you. I want you to show and also describe just, like, kind of your thought process and everything. I'm going to zoom the camera in a little bit. Okay. I think I'll add some finishing touches to this later. I was busy trying to talk with the chat. This is a piece that I call Isabel Explained. Mm. Beautiful. And what I was going for in this piece, like I said, isn't true representation, but the way that I experience Belle every day. Belle sits across the room from me. um, And often I will look up from my work and see Belle staring at me. And so that's why, (laughs) that's why, and I don't know if you know, but Belle has blue eyes, but that's why her eyes are so... I was about to say they're almost 3D. They are 3D. They, they, they... Jump off the canvas to wow. to really stare into your soul. The way that I catch Belle staring at me frequently. Um, well, yes. If there's any soul here that I'm going to stare into, it is yours. <laughs> it is. Cl- I do have a classy soul. You have soul. a classy soul. Um, the, purple, the purple that is on her lips and on her shirt, actually, re- purple is one of my favorite colors. And so purple represents the fact that regardless of the fact that she's constantly ridiculing me she remains one of my favorite people to work with at jhs petals mm, that's interesting that you but thank you joshua Excuse me. thank you i appreciate that um and gesture. the reason why i've given her a pale skin is well quite frankly because she's pale so i'm hoping that whoever catches this piece will be able mm. to connect with the the soul staring atrocity that i experienced shall we do a quick side by side quick back and forth ready wait hold on why is it not switching oh it's like really delayed for some reason yay hi i'm doing a bad job at this it's like so delayed there's probably some technical issue that we're experiencing on the other side of the chat all right um my turn sure okay um, for my portrait, as you know, I had Nick, and this is where we are at with it now. Um, there's a lot of symbolism in this painting. The clouds of blue and purple and red around him symbolize his explosive creativity. Um, we have a camera in one of the corners there. Um, to represent how he is um, a photographer and a filmer, film guy. Um, We have a guitar, an acoustic guitar, because although he works for a a pedal company that primarily plays electric guitar, I think Nick really, um, he really uh, excels on the acoustic guitar. It's it's his soul. It's the essence of who he is. Um, Very earthy and wholesome and robust. And then we have a D&D dice 
um, on here as well because that is another one of his interests is D and D. I believe that is a um, D twenty is what I've um, gone for there. And then we have a tomato because Nick has recently picked up um, gardening and I believe he has grown about six tomatoes this year and that is a great accomplishment. Um, now focusing on the features of his face, I made sure to define his cheekbones which I think are a very integral part of his facial infrastructure. Um, I gave him a big smile, a large mouth because I think that... <laughs> I think that his voice um, is really who he is, and he never really quite stops using his voice um, from the moment that I walk into work, from the moment that I leave work, his voice is heard throughout the halls of JHS Pedals, um, joking, singing, laughing, um, expressing himself constantly. Um, I gave him some rugged, dark eyebrows that I think are important because his eyebrows are a very expressive part of his face. Of course, the signature blue beanie. He had to have a beanie. Um, and and the, the eyes, the windows of the soul, I know I've discussed them before, but I think that they really capture um, the soul of an artist. And I don't think I need to say much more because <laughs> because the painting speaks for them. And it would be insulting for me to have to explain. Um, and of course the facial hair, the rosy cheeks, I did make sure to, um, focus on giving him, um, that nice rosy complexion. I worked on his skin tone for most of the time I worked on his skin tone, making sure that that was absolutely identical to, and true to his, his real form. So I call this, um, Nicholas in the wild, dreaming big and doing great things. Wow. That's beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, so for my painting, I call this um, it. <laughs> the camera switches on it. I call this um, Hermano of the Storm, and this is my painting of Joshua. Wow. And I was really trying to go for. When I look at Joshua, I just see just such a conflicted person. Um. As you can see on the one side, there's darker colors, and that's just like because you know there's he has a dark side, and it's just full of pain and sadness, and and like master's degrees and stuff. And then on the other side, it's like lightness, which is like all of the jokes and things that we make here, and it's just like all swirling around him, and he's in the middle, and he's like, I don't know what to do with all this. Mm. And so I just really wanted to capture the conflict within him. So it's compelling. Yeah. Um. I just. I just. I feel like I did a good job. So anyway. So. It's beautiful. I love your approach. It's very Thank different. You. Thank you. It Thank kind you. of looks like Wolverine. You know, maybe it's because you see yourself as Wolverine a little bit. <laughs> you're, you're probably. Right. You're interpreting your view, own view of yourself. Maybe it's because Nick's obsessed with Wolverine. I'm not obsessed with Wolverine. Mm. Okay, well, this has been good. Um, have we picked winners? Winners, yes. Zachary, thank you for your service. Thank you for um, contributing to this in so all the ways that you have. Who is um, the winner of Hermano in the Storm? Ex Libris. Oh! He's a, 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 a regular in the chat. Congratulations. X is with us all the time. X is always with us. The winner of Isabel, what's your portrait called? Um, it was Nicholas in the Wild, dreaming big and doing great things. Is Andy Bungert. Congratulations, Andy. May you be blessed by this painting and all that it will bring to your home. And may you may you um design your interior design around this painting and this painting only in your home amen and the winner of the experience of isabel is blue phone wow congratulations please congratulations. all of you email me at the jhs show at jhspedals.com send me your shipping address and we will get these paintings out to you promptly indubitably all right well 
I think we've covered everything. Mm -hmm. We've covered every classy detail. And so um, I think we'll close out uh, with a cheers. Yes. Um, to the future of JHS. Salud. Being the classiest pedal company ever and always. Uh, Ta-ta. Ta-ta. Cheers. Ta-ta. Uh, cheers, Joshua.